Columbus police are searching for a duo suspected of robbing a Dollar General. It's a brutal crime from 10 years ago. A 64 year old woman murdered inside her Columbus home. You don't want to go outside today like this. <laughs> you want to go outside like this. <laughs> Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson said in a news conference that the victims need time to heal. Do we know how the ladies are doing? Well, a Florida boy who lost a leg to bone cancer got some help from a group of Marines during a race. We've made it to Friday. Now it's time for fun. What to do, what to do. I thought in honor of National Mammography Day, I'll step up to the plate and actually go through and have a mammogram done live so I can tell women how important it is. That's what you want? Okay. Okay. All right. I want $2,000. <laughs> Columbus police need your help identifying a suspected armed robber. Take a look at your screen. Now that's styling and profiling right there. Uh, she prepared it. Don't worry about getting wet. Look at it. She didn't even know how to, to wrap it up. So <laughs> come on over here, Cheryl. Uh, beautiful day in the neighborhood. beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful For day, day in, in the, the neighborhood. neighborhood. Would you be mine? Anyway. Would you be mine? Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to keep my day job. So. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Have a great afternoon. You said it, not me. <laughs> In high definition, coverage you can count on. This is WTVM News Leader Now. Good evening and welcome to coverage you can count on at 530. I'm Cheryl Renee. Thanks so much for joining us. Four families in Phoenix City are still without homes after fire destroyed several units at their apartment complex Thursday evening. Several fire units rushed to the fire at the Dolphin Drive duplex off of Opelika Road. Firefighters battled the blaze for hours. No one was hurt. Only a family pet was trapped in the fire, but was eventually saved without being injured. The owners who abandoned their dog at an open like a vet clinic have come forward after hearing news reports the dog tested positive for rabies. They are being urged to get rabies treatments along with their three children. The countryside vet worker that was bitten by the dog is undergoing treatment. So are three other workers who were exposed to the rabbit dog. Lee County officials say this is still a dangerous situation. There's concern rabbit animals are in the area of Rocky Brook Road and Camelot subdivision in Opelika, where this rabbit dog lived in a backyard. One of the original Tuskegee Airmen passed away yesterday afternoon. Lieutenant Colonel Herbert Eugene Carter died at the East Alabama Medical Center. He flew 77 missions and crash landed only one. The Tuskegee Airmen were the first black aviators in the U.S. military. They were trained in Alabama at the Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, as a segregated unit during World War II. A broken fence and long lines of traffic are all that's left after a truck flipped on its side and crashed into a tree. It happened this morning by Whisperwood Apartments on Milgen Road in Columbus. Officials tell us the driver was on Milgen heading towards J.R. Allen when he lost control going around a corner, flipped the truck on its side, drove through a fence and crashed into a tree. Luckily, the two people in the truck were not hurt. The truck, however, was not so lucky. 35 people have been arrested in Birmingham on charges that largely include soliciting prostitution. They were captured during a four day operation aimed at cracking down on prostitution in the city. And get this, police say the women and sometimes men were selling sex for as little as $5. More than a year and a half after Japan's devastating earthquake and tsunami, there's still more than 13 million tons of debris. Some debris from near the Fukushima nuclear plant is being hauled to other parts of the country, ground up into mulch and burned. The debris has not triggered any elevated radioactive readings, but many people don't want the potentially hazardous materials coming to their towns. Tsunami debris is Japan's biggest cleanup job since World War II, and officials say the cost may double to an estimated $125 billion. It's no secret obesity and pregnancy can be a dangerous combination for both the mother and the baby. But now medical researchers are finding this combination could bring a surprising new risk. Raycom's Diana Crawford shows us how obesity and pregnancy may affect a child in school. Well, coverage you can count on. We'll continue with the forecast. Right now, let's take a look at Callaway Gardens from our Alpha Insurance Sky Cam in Pine Mountain. Temperature 64 degrees. Stay with News Leader Now. Here's a look across Columbus live through our sky cam at the top of the government center on this Friday afternoon. And on my Facebook page, I posted, oh, Friday, I've missed you. <laughs> Why did it take you so long to get here? Yeah, and could you stick around and a yeah, while? Yeah, a while longer, <laughs> exactly. If every day was only Saturday, the world would be a wonderful place. <laughs> That's right. So let's talk about the weather. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful day out there today. We're a yeah. little bit cooler than uh, no, yes. It should be for this time of year, but not as cold as it was yesterday. We're about okay. 10 or 11 degrees warmer right now than we have been. Coming up on News Leader 9 at 530, breaking up can be a hard thing to do for young teens. In a special report, we explain how to keep your kids safe from heartache. Plus, a group of students defied all odds and dove feet first 
into a school project. We'll explain coming up. Breaking up is hard to do and we've seen in cases around the country and even with teenagers, it can become violent and sometimes deadly. Technology can make it even more hurtful. But now a new initiative is teaching kids how to control their impulses and break up the right way. News Leader 9's Rosalind Giles explains. Students from Florida International University in Miami took a walk on the wild side, or at least they attempted to. Students took part in a class project where they had to make it to the other side of a 175-foot lake on campus. They designed special shoes from things like styrofoam, plywood, and duct tape. Out of 41 teams, only 10 failed to make it across. The first to make it to the other side of the lake won $500, bragging rights, and a well-deserved A in the class. If you're having a tough Friday, this little guy may brighten your day. We'll introduce you to the feline some are calling the world's grumpiest cat. Coming up. A cat named Tartar Sauce, there he is, has become an internet sensation <laughs> for her frowny face and the grumpy cat, as people are calling her, is from Arizona. It all started when a photo was uploaded online and within 48 hours it was viewed more than a million times. Yes. Hilarious. They Either are. way, you Very will not cute. be grumpy with the forecast. We are <laughs> expecting beautiful weather out there today. A high near 70 degrees. We should be in the mid 70s through Saturday and Sunday with mostly sunny skies. You're right. That forecast makes me happy. It makes me happy too. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for the latest news and weather. Just go to WTVM.com. Take care. Hope you're happy. <laughs> it was a call that even shocked dispatchers. I told the uh, operator I said, this is Mayor Wright. A 911 call from the mayor saying, I've been shot down at my home. I am elated this day. 24 year old Christopher Wright is one of the youngest mayors in Georgia. A feat that didn't come easy, but nothing compared to what he would face Halloween night as he arrived at his family's home. I saw someone bust out of the door, uh, and they got my attention by crying, Hey! Two masked gunmen ambushed Wright, and they opened fire on me four times. Uh, I was shocked, I was stunned, I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this is how I'm gonna die? Clinging to life, Wright cries for help. After crying out a couple of times, I heard footsteps running back toward me. Uh, and the gunman, he came and he stood over me and he shot me twice more. A neighbor came to his rescue. He grabbed me up in his arms and he said, Chris, my God, what have they done to you? Wright was rushed to the hospital where he spent 24 days and another two weeks in rehab. He later found out his mom was inside the home and was beaten. She is physically fine, however, the emotional wounds for both are far from healing. I do live in fear. I do. The assailants have not been caught and uh, I have no idea who this was. And according to Wright, neither does the GBI. He says when it comes to the investigation, he often feels like he's the suspect instead of the victim. They interrogate me as if I brought this on myself. Uh, they implied maybe I was, would, maybe I was uh, involved in some kind of illegal drugs or some, side, some sort of love triangle, and I thought that was just a bit absurd. With one bullet still lodged in him, Wright has a long road to recovery. It's still hard for Wright to look at pictures from his days in the hospital, and it's not just a wounded mayor you see. You're looking at a miracle. I would like to imagine that the Lord dispatched his angels to come and patch me up and put me back on the battlefield, and I'm ready. In Columbus, Cheryl Renee, WTVM News Leader 9. Went inside. I did do another one, Casey, real fast. Coach Doug Blevins has an eye for kicking. Just ask Casey Hess. You got it. Keep your head down now. I, I just started like five weeks ago. I didn't know anything. Now he's kicking field goals. Then there's Casey Stewart, the only female on her football team who comes from Griffin, Georgia, to get a lesson from the coach. Nice. Much better. Oh, he's a character. He doesn't make it like, you know, hard or anything like that. It's really fun and, you know, he keeps you going. You see, the interesting thing about Coach Blevins is that he's never walked or kicked a football. Well, I've got cerebral palsy, so I, I never could actually play the game. And I love football from the time I was four years old. And that passion led go. him to the NFL there. as a kicking consultant for teams now, like the New York at? Jets and Miami Dolphins. Now he started a kicking school in Buena Vista, working with athletes like A.J. Wells, an eighth grader at Marion County High School. Right there. There you go. See that? It took him only ten minutes to fix some serious problems I had, so... And it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. But it took a little longer when it came to my problems. When you hit the ball, Cheryl, 
You want your knee locked. I actually tried my hand at kicking. Coach worked with me, and even though the ball never made it through the uprights, I did get better. And that's why Cash Kiefer made the trip from Maine to Georgia. I uh, come down here just training three to four days a week with Coach and uh, hopefully get a shot uh, in a training camp. Well, life's tough, and I hope that what I do can inspire people to, 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 to be better people, try to be more successful in whatever they decide to go into. That's why we salute Coach Doug Blevins as our News 9 leader. Cheryl Renee, WTVM, News Leader 9.